What is home? <laughs> you see, that is something that I struggle to figure out. I put this burden and guilt and weight on me for no reason to struggle to figure out what is home. But obviously, I go to the internet and I search up the definition of home. And the dictionary definition of home is the place where one lives permanently, especially as a member of a family or household. And the second definition is just an institution for people needing professional care or supervision. Now, I hate to burst your bubble, but this definition is absolutely wrong. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it, is, it is wrong. I, I do apologize. Um, but truly, the definition of home is nothing that some man or woman can write and put in a book and set the standard for everyone of this earth. Home for me is completely different than what this definition says. Home is this unity and communion of people. Home is the body of Christ. Home is not just a place with a roof over my head. Home is a community. Obviously, this won't make any sense now, so let's rewind and take a look at how I figured out what home truly was for me. Hey guys, it's me again. Uh, so, you guys are going to kill me, but like this little first part is very, very important, and I did not film, but basically like the first day was just me getting to know everyone. I was really shy. Um, everyone intimidated me a lot for some reason. I don't know why, because everyone is fantastic and amazing. But this night, I went downstairs and talked to Logan, whose house it is, and basically told him that I wanted to get baptized and that I felt the calling. You know, in my mind, I had this like perfect baptism set up, like I wanted this to be here and I wanted it to be here and all this. I found out very quick that that's not what happened because the Holy Spirit was like, psych, you're getting baptized in a bathtub tonight. And I was like, uh, okay. And um, I was baptized along with my brother Thomas and my sister Emily. It is just an honor. So I'm just going to play those video clips together and you guys can just see the Holy Spirit work through. Uh, me, Thomas, and Emily. He died, rose again, conquering your sins. Yes, sir. You're going to follow him for the rest of your life. Yes, sir. And embrace on your public declaration of faith. Put your hand on your nose. Right there. <laughs> Stand right there. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God! The shadow of my <laughs> if you're watching this, it is Thursday, February 11th, and my family has been here for over a week not even a week they've been here for a little bit but this is one of the few days i'll be able to spend with them um so i'm super excited god was really moving when we're there i got baptized it was insane and yeah you guys are coming along i'm actually so excited but yeah you guys get to meet my family my little family my brothers and sisters you guys get to meet my home i'm super excited All right, I got to the house, and this is this is Garrett, the dad of the group, Stop. and <laughs> my favorite human being on the planet. Garrett has honestly helped me through so much. He's such a, I don't even know, such a true blessing. I, I just love this man so much. He gives the best hugs, too. <laughs> you do. You do give the best hugs. You're like... Look, I don't receive that. <laughs> So let me explain what I received that means because this happened a lot throughout the trip and I don't even know how many times it's said in the documentary, but it's basically a way for us to publicly declare to each other that we like accept a compliment or we accept nice words about us or we accept a gift or something. So if you hear that a lot in the documentary, that's what that means. And I find myself saying it all the time because of Garrett and all of these other people saying it so much. Um, so yeah, we just... It just means to like take something uh, as a compliment or like take something as a gift. So I'm tattooing my feet with images and symbols belonging to people that I love and that I care about because 
everywhere that I walk, I want to carry those people and carry their memories with me. In the Hebrew language, the phrase to uncover oneself, or more importantly, to uncover one's feet, is a euphemism for nakedness. And so for the people that I love, I want to be naked before them, symbolically. I, I want to be vulnerable with them. And even more so for the people that I love and I genuinely trust, I want to permanently place them in my nakedness, in my vulnerability. Um, so even when I do have those moments of loneliness, those moments of vulnerability, um, I know I have people with me. This first full day with everyone was just me trying to get to know everyone, make a personal connection with these people that I had never met outside of social media, and get to show them my vulnerability. But during this time when I wasn't recording, my good friend Nick Malone was actually taking over the vlog. What's up, vlog? I'm Nick Malone. Uh, this is Nick Malone, one of the first people I bonded with and clicked with instantly. He is also one of the funniest people I know. Now, I'm going to warn you, I haven't even watched this clip all the way through before editing it. I'm doing the voiceover before, and I will bet money he says something about a burger with no honey mustard. I would put $50 on it before I continue watching this clip. And, uh, I just want to say what's up. You're beautiful. You're amazing. Um, if you're watching this, uh, just keep on going, keep on trucking, because uh, there's plenty of road out there to be traveling. Hey guys, hey guys, it's done, right? <laughs> Do you guys like burgers with no honey mustard or with my honey mustard? I knew it. I, did I not just bet my... I knew that he would say something about a burger with no honey mustard. Look, I'm literally on it right now doing the voice. What in the... I am, I am a genius. A genius, but continue watching. No I'm actually mustard. going. Wait, I like honey mustard. Because I'm just smiling straight it's, Yeah, it's going. Oh. I right, um, crunchy, crunchy or smooth peanut butter? Crunchy. Smooth. Psych? Get your look. But only every so often. Oh my Psych? God. Get that out of here. <laughs> Show that tripping, brother. <laughs> trip, 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 tripping. I'm here with the Nick Malone. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what was that? Oh, my bad. Yo. Um, here, I'm going to give you a 100. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Some days in life, you want to be a hot dog. Okay. Others, you want to be a glizzy. Oh. <laughs> There's a fine line between that comma and that digi. Okay. You see, if you make the money, then you get the honey. Man, that's all a lie. I'm just a sly guy. Oh. But if you have a pancake, then you got a napkin. But if you have a burger, you got a chaplain. Oh, because you're preaching and you're driving. But with Yo. God, you always thriving. Oh. Oh. Yo, that was bars. Eating a burger with no honey mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Eating a burger with no honey mustard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what I love about this documentary is it's not really a documentary. It's more of actually what real life is because that's what a documentary should be. Documenting the crazy, wild, fun things that we do. One of my favorite things about being together late at night is that we would gather around and it would get super late. And when it would, everyone would just kind of go into a room when someone would start picking the guitar and worship would happen. And there would be a ton of us just in there on our knees, hands in the air, praising God, acknowledging and humbling ourselves before our Father. And that was something that really was eye-opening to me is because we must worship God and give all glory to God. And so what I'm going to have is for the next few moments just a little bit of worship playing in the background as we are worshiping. And I just want you to see how the Holy Spirit was moving in the room with all of us. He's able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants to. Just ask the man who's on the bones of Elijah if there's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled and the tomb in the garden. What happens when God says mercy?
It's so beautiful. You can hear the raw emotion. Regardless if you like it or not, you can see the Holy Spirit moving. I know it's not the best lighting, but that's not the point. You can hear the passion in these voices. You can see the emotion. You can see the hands raised. You can see people humbling themselves before God. Is that not insane? After this, I went home and I just began to write letters to everyone. I tend to express my thoughts and feelings better when I write out in pen and paper, so that's exactly what I did. I began to write out in pen and paper um, exactly what I was thinking and feeling, and I was writing individual letters. And that will come into play later in this documentary. Okay, let me, let me set this up. <laughs> Um, okay, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little uneven. Hello, vlog. This is Elijah Lamb, one of the goofiest people I know, one of the funniest people I know, one of the most wise people I know, and, and someone I became super close with on this trip, and he is hilarious. <laughs> Funny scene. What's, what's a, what's a, what's a place like you doing in a vlog like this? <laughs> Yo. What up, Shadi? <laughs> um. Hi. Yo. In this vlog on. Yo, we're getting gas. I'm looking at myself. Looking mad cute today. Yeah. That. <coughs> that it rise like incense. My whole life a fragrance. I was I was preaching a sermon in my old youth group, and I was trying to say that like worship, like you lift up an incense before the Lord, right? Because that's in the Bible. What I said was, you lift up an incest before the Lord. And I like stopped for a second, and I was like, what did I, what did I just do? And then I was like, hmm, Adam and Eve, and then I kept going. So that's my funny story. Yo, you're rocking the can, bro. Yo, my beat, my beat. Oh. <laughs> this day was more of a chill day. It was me trying to get to know everyone, me vibing with everyone, finding my clique there, finding who I truly liked hanging out with, and me ultimately spending quality time with my family these people and it was incredible i got to pray with frank and nick i got to hear tyler rap i got to pray with griffin and just really get to know people's stories during the day what an incredible day it was this day hey guys i just got uh i just got done like crying for like 30 minutes um i've got a lot of anxiety on me i've got a lot of um sadness and pain this, this community that has been brought together has been one of the best things of my, of my life, a true blessing. My brother Garrett said it best, you know, God can give us this, this, this taste of a community like heaven, this taste of a heavenly like community that can truly impact our life. And I, I was getting anxiety because I don't want this to end. Then I was also reminded where, where we find our dependence. Do we depend on Jesus or do we depend on man? You know, we can't, we can't depend on man. If we depend on man's own understanding, we will be led astray. Yet if we depend on God, we will be guided down the right path. As much as I love these people, I need to stop depending on them. It's okay to be friends with them. It's okay to turn to them for advice and all. But I need to stop depending on them and start depending on God. So praise be to God for brokenness and vulnerability. I've been the most vulnerable I've ever been in my entire life this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Lamb. I look very tired right now. Donut. <laughs> Get over here. Yo. Snuggle time with Elijah. Jalen, I miss you, beautiful soul. I have a letter for you, actually. Really? Yeah. You and Joe. I combined yours because y'all like a package. Bro, David gave me a letter and I swear it's in Sanskrit. I cannot read it at all. <laughs> Yo. I, I could not read a single word. I was like, reading it. Did you just call me a Jew? I, like, <sighs> I miss you. You see how you yeah. get it? That's the most light skin thing. Yo. Yeah. I miss you. Huh? You remember of Tom Holland? Let's go. Hey, it's Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> what the it's, heck? It's me. It's Hello. It's Tom Holland. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
guys, guys. No, seriously, I gotta. <laughs> After the endless Mongolian throat singing or whatever you want to call it, uh, Jalen and everyone else screaming really early in the morning to wake everyone up and a little bit of worship, it was finally time to say goodbye to the Nick Malone. Can you believe it? A bunch of Christian guys and girls kicked me, Nick, and Thomas out of the house. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of Christians. Can you believe it? If they were Christians, would they truly kick us out of the house? No. no. Now, tell them. Now, now what are you going to have to eat for lunch? Grass. Who? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is so sad, though. You going home? Yeah, I just try to be funny so that way it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Last words? Yeah. Um, always eat your burgers with no honey mustard. That's right. <laughs> Peace out! <laughs>after sending Nick on his way, I had a very awesome deep talk with Miss Emma Tichy, um, my girlfriend, she just doesn't really know, um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, um, but after that, we went and were moving cars that were being stuck in Logan's driveway, and after that, the night was slowly coming to an end, and my final day with my family was slowly coming to an end. How do you feel? I feel strong. I feel accomplished. That's right. What yes, sir. Hey, I'm vlogging. I'm vlogging. Hey, stop telling me I'm vlogging. I can't even No, it's not my vlog. Guys, here in the vlog, we get really emotional. We're so in tune with our emotions. Yeah, and that's what family's all about. Hatred. Oh, please don't hit me. I thought it was going to hit. Welcome back to the vlog, guys. Isabel's crying. Isabel needs a hug. Look, look how great of a person I am. Comforting my crying friend. <laughs> okay, sorry vlog, I'll be right back. Vlog, 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 vlog. David Ladding, sexual predator. <laughs> Dang, you look so cute right now. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, those that eyes. Is that David Ladding? Yo, look at these two Labrador's Labrador next to each other. On TikTok this morning. It's the Walmart version of David Ladding. So, who's a... Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, Elijah, are you Jewish? Because the drip is real. Oh, no, he's Jewish though. Wow. 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 Dude, let's all kiss at the same time. Ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs> Good, for the vlog, for the vlog. <laughs> I brought the vlog up in here. Come on now. I brought the vlog Hello. up in here. Is it on? Yeah, it is on. It may not seem on, but it is on. This is Sia. Hi. My best friend now. Um, gang, 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 yeah. gang. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Don't invalidate yourself just to please other people because you'll end up hurting yourself more in the long run than if you just confront it in the meantime. That was so deep. I asked Nick Malone and he said something about eating a burger with no honey mustard. <laughs> <laughs> and that was so deep. By this time, uh, the light was getting dark. It was getting very cold outside and our time was ticking. It was so sad, yet joyful, happy, and peaceful, because this is my family. And it was not a goodbye, it was just to see you later. Because I will see these guys, whether it's in this life or the next. But what other way to go out than with a jam session? Another thing that this whole trip taught me is to be myself. Be yourself. Who cares what you are or who you are? God made you fearfully. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you aren't willing to show your true colors and express your personality, show your goofiness, vibe with your friends, be crazy and wild in those energetic moments with your friends and still be able to glorify God, then what are you doing? Get after and show your personality. Because God made you and molded you into you and there is no one like you. After this vibe session with everyone, we went back and started sliding in the mud. I don't even know. Time will spend, but after this 
time of sliding in the mud, it was time for C to get baptized. Listen, Lamb, what do you think after that, uh, after that mudding performance that outside? Oh I'm covered in mud. Uh, not feces. That is a lie. If you hear anyone say that I pooped my pants, that person is a liar. You should never trust them. He's lying. No! <laughs> no! Don't believe me. I only did that one time. It was just three days ago. I haven't done it since. <laughs> First off, can I say something? Yeah. yeah. You guys have literally been like the family like Bryce was saying when I talked to him earlier that like I didn't know I could experience. So um thank you because it's gonna be really scary going back. But I'm really confident that when I see you guys in six months, it's going to be incredible. We love you. We love you, Gia! Oh. Yes, Gia! Alright, that's good. Upon your public declaration of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. You got it on video, that's hey, good. We can see who did hey. it. Hey, hey, vlog. Hey, I'm... <laughs> yeah, I will impregnate you. No, 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 no! Oh, I have a girlfriend! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Caught you red-handed. Not inva or invalidate you or whatever he just said. Yeah, no. Hey, shot it! <laughs> hey, shot it! You know, this whole thing is crazy. This whole documentary, me watching the edits and me watching this over, reminds me of all the good memories right now. But for you watching this at home, if you're just dipping your toe in the water with God, if you're afraid to go all in, what does that mean? What steps do you take to go all in? Encouragement that I have is just a simple step. One simple step can change your life. One simple step can change your perspective. One simple step can change your eternity. Um, and the advice I have is that taking that step of faith, trusting in Jesus, trusting in His power, trusting that if He can do it in the past, He can do it again. Um, and so if you're watching this right now, I want to let you know that you're never too far gone. You're never too far um, from God to, uh, to not receive His love, to not receive His beauty and His glory. So today I just challenge you to just take that one step. There's an, there's an atheist, okay, he's sitting in the middle of a field, okay, and, and Satan's on one side and Jesus is on the other, and there's a fence that goes right between. Now, the atheist, he's smart, he thinks he's cool, right? He actually doesn't pick Satan, and he doesn't really pick Jesus, okay, and he, and he sits on the fence, and he laughs to himself, and while he's laughing, boom, it goes black. He's looking around, he's like, what's going on? The fence is still there. And Satan puts his hand on his shoulder and his heart just drops. Here's the scary thing too. Satan was not a man with a pitchfork and horns. He, he was an attractive man in a nice suit. Uh, a seductive looking man, beautiful. And Satan whispered into this man's ear and said, I've been looking for you. And the man's like, what? <laughs> what? No, 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 I didn't, I didn't pick you, I didn't pick you, I didn't pick you, I have the fence. And, and Satan grabs his, his sword harder and said, the fence belongs to me. You'll never experience the fullness of God if you're not willing to fully submit to God. That's all I need to say. You're <laughs> never going to understand full peace, full joy, and full freedom if you're not willing to fully flee from sin. And you can't claim to love and follow God if you're still trying to the best encouragement I can give anybody is that once you experience the love of God, like make that decision, like chase God with your own heart, you never go back to square zero. You always have that square one, like that one thing you can always count on. No matter how many times you turn away or like stray or just go off on your own path, and it leads you to basically like self-destruction. Like you're never gonna be as great as you could if you're not chasing God. You can't fill a God-sized void with a human-sized solution, you know? And with that being said, I just encourage you to seek out God, chase His heart, and dive into your word, honestly. That's really what I got. Actually, before I came here, uh, I was struggling with my faith. And 
the one thing that has pushed me to get to Christ more and more is just always letting Him break my heart over and over. And just, you know, knowing the fact that Jesus is always with me, Jesus is never gone, even if we feel like He's not there, He's just always around. And so, um, I encourage for people to just keep having that faith. Don't, don't ever um, lack it. Um, even if you feel like the, the time is just, you know, not right for you to settle for Jesus, the time is actually always right for you to settle for Jesus because He's always seeking you. He's jealous. And so I just, um, you know, just keep having faith and just um, keep moving forward and just have that love of Christ just bursting inside of you. I've done it all. You know, I've done it all. I've done, you know, pot, pills, alcohol, all that, man. And there's, there's just nothing... Like, it's weird because going back to those days, it was like, it was like, it's what, I feel like a big part of it is trying to fit into, right? Mm -hmm. Culture says, culture says, do this and you'll be loved, do this, you'll fit in, mm -hmm. where that's great to fit in, but we're not, as Christians, we're not called to fit in and it's going to suck, right? It's, it's going to suck to not fit in, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to feel like an outcast, you're gonna, like you said, you're going to lose friends, but man, I mean... And it's really tough because there's really no words until you experience that. There's really no words because people can't understand it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just a real, that's an honest truth is until you accept Christ in your life and the Holy Spirit fill, fills your soul, those people aren't going to understand that peace and that love that Christ has for you. You know what I mean? Even if you give the 99.9% .9 to God, you're still going to feel empty because it's that... 0.1% that you're holding on to, that tiny thing that you think doesn't matter, that ultimately is going to determine how your faith could change your life. So if you're scared to deep, dip your feet in the water, instead, put your entire foot in. Don't be afraid, because if you're going to give them half of it, why wouldn't you just give it all and see what happens? You know that people can hurt you, so for once, trust that God's not going to. Wherever you're watching this, whether you are gathered around with your friends, or you're with your family, or you're on a long car ride home, watching this video somehow, my encouragement to you, if you take anything from this video, if you learn anything about home, is that home doesn't have to be a roof or walls. As you can tell, home for me is this community. Home for me is this people. Home for me is something that I've been searching for for a long time, and I have finally figured out what it means. You know, the definition of home off of Google is, is nothing like it means to me or you. It can mean something completely different to you. It, but to me, it is this people. It is this community. It is the body of Christ. I find my joy and happiness in these people. I find my love in these people. I've learned how to love because of these people. So if you're watching this, there is hope. There is hope that you get out of the dark time. There is hope that you find home. But in order to find home, you must turn to God. You must seek God, yearn for God, ask God for wisdom, ask God for guidance, because I would not have met these people without that. These people mean the world to me, and I would not have met them or grown in my relationship with God if I didn't ask God for help. So, whoever you are watching this, I love you so much. And I don't even know if you hear that all the time, but I love you so much. You're not alone. Everything's going to be okay. And that's something I struggle to learn. But I hope you learn that from this documentary. I love you. Goodbye.